It's that time of the week for Top Tip Tuesday. It's Bob Wormsley here from Insidium. Hello to you. So today we're going to be looking at Nexus and we're going to be using the modifier NX Scale, which is used uh, amongst other things to resize particles. And I'm going to be showing you how we can create a scale effect where particles grow at differing rates. So we've got some nice variation in there and also so they end up at a varied radius value as well before fading away and dying. So that's it, NX scale. Let's start that clock and we'll begin. Here's our scene then, and we have a wind and an NX turbulence giving us this particle motion. And you can see our particles are scaling up. Now let's have a look in the XP emitter. In the emission tab, the radius is set to zero centimeters. And we have an NX scale in the scene on the default settings. And this is what's driving our particles growth. So they're starting with zero centimeters. And then if we go to our settings, the default operation is set to change value over time absolute. So it's taken the birth particle radius and every frame that's being increased by 0.2 centimeters. And we can see that happening. And then they get to a certain size and they stop growing. And that's because by default, clamp to radius limit is active with an upper radius limit of 20 centimeters. So the particles grow up to 20 centimeters and then stop. So what we want to do is we want these particles to then start to shrink. So what we need to do is adjust this upper radius limit. And if we leave the scene playing, I could just reduce this and they're shrinking and that's fine but they're all shrinking, even the ones that have just been born. So we're not going to be able to keyframe this. It's not going to work. Instead, we need to use data mapping. So let's put that back on 20. And we're going to map this according to the particle age. So let's go to our mapping tab. We're going to add an age map. And the parameter we want to map to particle age isn't variation. It is this parameter that we've just looked at, upper radius limit. So let's find that in our list. There you are, upper radius limit. Now we want to say when our particles get to, it's going to be around 100 frames old, we want that radius limit to start reducing so they shrink. So let's say the range minimum is when they're 100 frames old and we want that to happen over, say, a 50 frame period. So the range max will be 150. So what this has done, it's, it's uh, adjusted this graph and it's saying on the X axis, that's our particle age. Here's frame 100 to a frame 150. And the Y axis is the parameter with the not uh, at full on the Y axis. It'll have all of that max radius value and at zero, it'll have none of that max radius value. So we need to put a curve something like this, which is saying a particle will have the full maximum radius value of 20 up until frame 100. And then at frame 100, it'll start reducing and reducing and reducing. And by the time it gets to a frame 150, it'll have zero maximum radius value. So let's see at frame 100. Yep, they start scaling back down. So our mapping is working perfectly. Right. Let's go back to our object tab. Now we can add a bit more variation. We can. Look, let's increase the radius change so they grow more quickly. But let's also add some variation so they scale up at different rates. So that's going to make it seem more varied. Let's just dolly in a bit. Yeah, so they're all growing up at different rates. Great. So now we can also say that not all of the particles can ever achieve this maximum radius limit. Because at the moment they're all growing up to 20 centimetres. So let's clamp within range and this means that they're able to get up to a maximum of 20 centimeters but each particle randomly will have its radius clamped somewhere within these two numbers so that means we're going to have much more randomness in our scaling and our max particle value but then they'll still all scale down excellent so the last thing we need to do if we go to our xp emitter and pick a display mode that doesn't show radius, that doesn't care about the radius, so we could change it to maybe squares, you'll see that even though our particles are scaling down to zero, they still exist in the scene. And this isn't very efficient. We want them to die when their particle, go, their size goes back down to zero. So let's do that with a question. We'll go to Insidium, 
x particles nexus we'll bring in an nx question and first of all we need to ask a question now remember our particles are born with a radius of zero and then they're scaled up so we can't have this question affect particles when they're first born if we're going to be asking a radius question so all we need to do is just make sure that they're a bit old they've got a few frames under their belt before we try and ask this radius question so to do that we'll just say in the first question if the particle age is greater than say i don't know five frames um, then do the next question we'll add another question and this one we're going to say it has to be an and operator so the particle has to be over this age and its radius needs to be equal to zero then do something and there's something we want to do is just to kill them so we'll go and bring in a action we don't want to set the color we want to kill the particle okay so here we go particles are born yeah they scale up we're not seeing that because the display mode but yes when they scale down they then die perfect so let's go back to our emitter display put it back to spheres and now we have got nice random rate of growth random max uh, radius value scaling back down and then dying so we have an efficient scene